After lifting over 700 million people out of deprivation, China declares an end to extreme poverty in the country. But what does that mean for the country and the world? Is the struggle really over? And after four years of tension, there are hopes that the U.S.-China relationship is heading for calmer waters. But what would it look like? And can cooperation trump confrontation? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you live from Beijing. I'm Li Xin. China declared victory in its fight against extreme poverty after nine counties in southwest China's Guizhou province were raised from the rank of extreme deprivation. This marks the completion of an objective high on the government's agenda since 2015. But the announcement has also met questions and even skepticism. How did China manage? How significant is this feat? Could it be sustainable? To explore these and other topics, I'm pleased to be joined from our Beijing studio by by Matteo Marquezil, head of the East Asia Regional Hub and country representative for China, Korea and the DPRK at uh, IFAD, or the International Fund for Agricultural Development, a specialized agency of the United Nations, and via Sky by Xi Lun Yu, associate professor at the School of Applied Economics at Renmin University. Welcome to both of you to the show. Um, Matteo, let me go to you first. Now, on Monday, China declared that the nine last poorest regions in Guizhou were lifted out of extreme poverty. That means that all 832 registered poor counties in China have been delisted. That's on top of already more than 700 million people um, lifted out of extreme poverty over the past four decades. According to your decades of experience interacting with China in exactly uh, that endeavor, how do you think China was able to achieve this goal? And uh, from your experience, what do you think the outside world fails to see so far? Well, uh, first of all, good evening to everyone. Uh, um, let, let me start by saying, uh, by, by sending my congratulations to China for this uh, historic achievement. Uh, um, quite frankly, this is uh, really extraordinary. If we, if we think that uh, uh, not, not, not more than uh, 40 years ago, there were more than 700 million people living uh, uh, in poverty, 90% of the uh, population at that time. Uh, I, I, no other country can claim to have achieved uh, such an impact on poverty reduction in such a limited uh, period of, of time. But to get back to your question, I think there are many uh, factors that contributed to, to, uh, uh, to this achievement. But let me list what I consider the most important four. Uh, the first one uh, is a series Maybe of... Maybe just start with one. <laughs> start with, well, we won't have the time to go into all of these details, but tell us the most significant one. I think the most uh, significant uh, is leadership. Uh, and I know that this uh, word is often used or abused but I think that uh, uh, Chinese leadership had the um, long-term vision and the commitment to poverty eradication. And this commitment has translated, uh, uh, was not simply a political statement, has translated uh, into uh, allocation of resources for poverty reduction and has translated into a clear accountability and responsibility system at all levels. I think this was the most important factors that contributed to that, to that achievement. Do you think the outside world has been able to recognize that fact, factor and uh, um, hence they're able to understand what it means for a country to lift so many people out of extreme poverty? Matteo? Sorry, said again. Uh, do you th what do you think the outside world has failed, if any, to see in what China has been doing or how China has been able to do that? Well, we have been uh, a testimony of the journey that China uh, took in, in reducing poverty. In fact, we, we were the first uh, organization uh, that provided a concessional loan to China back in 81. So we have been accompanying uh, through uh, China through all this process. And I can uh, testify by simply looking at the results on the ground of our project in China in the most poor and remote areas that the livelihood, the lives, the lives of people has, uh, has significantly improved over the, over the past year. So um, our experience in China confirmed that uh, China has been able to improve the livelihood of, of its people in rural areas. However, there have been uh, quite some questions, quite some skepticism as well according, um, concerning China's uh, 
uh, progress in this regard. And Professor Shear, let me point out one, for instance, some people have been questioning uh, the definition of extreme poverty according to China. The World Bank says extreme poverty means living under 1.9 US dollars a day. Uh, China has a different number, for instance, as you can see, uh, as was set in, the, um, in 2010, that number was uh, 2000. Uh, 300 renminbi yuan per person per year, which was less than one U.S. dollar. Right now, um, if you if you compare that to, in in terms of PPP purchasing power parity, it's something over 3,000 yuan, but still um, less than seems to be less than 1.9 U.S. dollars a day. Has China's yardstick in measuring extreme poverty been a fair one, Professor Xie? Oh, well, uh, that's true. Uh, it, there exist many indicators to measure the degree of poverty. For example, the indicator of household income or the indicator of uh, expenditure. So the definition of extreme poverty varies when you use different indicators or talk about different areas. For example, what $2 can buy change, uh, changes a lot in the U.S. and in China, right? And also the extreme poverty line changes a long time. For example, about 10 years ago, we, when we talk about $1 village, and now the line increases to about $2. So think about what you can buy with 10 Chinese yuan when you were little and uh, what you can buy right now, right? So the yardstick adjusts with periods and uh, areas. Hmm. Yeah. So it's nuanced. Um, Matteo, what is your reaction to this kind of discussion? Because that seems to be uh, quite a bit of a uh, column space being dedicated to that. And for instance, Wall Street Journal said if uh, the, the bar would be set at 5.5 US dollars a day, it would mean that China still has a very sizable population living in under uh, poverty. How do you view such discussion? Well, I think that by uh, focusing, debating or quibbling about uh, the exact number, uh, we run the risk of, uh, of losing the big picture. And the big picture is that China uh, has managed to uh, improve the, the, the lives and the livelihoods of hundreds of millions of people. Um, now, it's uh, to me irrelevant, it doesn't really matter if uh, uh, these people are now living uh, uh, you know, with $1.90 or $2.10 uh, cents. Dollar. Um, so China has to celebrate that, that achievement, however, should not uh, be complacent about that, uh, that achievement. And uh, this uh, uh, discussion may uh, divert the attention on the remaining challenges that China has to face in the next years uh, to uh, sustain the, those achievements. Mm. However, having said that, 1.9 US dollars or 2.3 US dollars still is a very, very low number uh, compared to you know, whichever standard you, you, you might want to talk about. So uh, maybe per, not per this definition per se, um, Mattel, you have to admit and we have to admit that still there is a very large population who are living in if not absolute poverty but in poverty how do you look at the daunting ch task china is faced with uh, looking ahead yeah absolutely this is probably the first the most important challenge that china has to face in the in the next few years uh, as you rightly said there are uh, still a large uh, part of the population that lives uh, uh, above but close to the poverty line and uh, this, this uh, uh, segment of population uh, is at risk of falling back into poverty for, uh, for any shock. Um, the COVID-19 has been an example of uh, how uh, an unexpected event uh, like an epidemic can, can affect a large part of the population and the, the, the fact that the most vulnerable are at most risk to fall back into poverty. Mm. So this is probably the, the, the first and most important challenge that China has to face in the years to come. Some people have also um, said that uh, this is a vanity project of the Chinese government, that they made the pledge um, a couple of years ago, a clear pledge, and now, you know, as expected, they're accomplishing that, or that they're using this to gain credibility for the government to look good. Um, Professor Shear, what is your reaction to such claims? Well, uh, I do not agree with neither of these above uh, points. Well, I did many surveys in poor counties in years. Uh, I see the positive changes by my eyes and in these areas after the po poverty alleviation program. 
and uh, my grandparents and many relatives live in villages and small towns in less developed areas. And I see the dramatic changes of their life, uh, of their living conditions after the program. So uh, I will invite the people who have the arguments you just mentioned. I invited them to come to these impoverished areas in China to see and to talk with the local villagers. I think then the, they will change their opinions. Hmm. Matteo, what is your reaction to such discussion that it's a vanity project, that uh, um, it's a bygone conclusion? They wanted to do this, they knew they could do it, and now, you know, it's time, bingo, they did it. How do you look at that? Well, my answer is similar to, to the one of, of the professor. Uh, I've been working in China for the past six years. Uh, um, my organization, IFAD, uh, wor is working uh, in the most poor and remote areas of, uh, of the country, uh, basically financing, supporting poverty reduction projects. And I can uh, tell you that I visited, uh, you know, the most poor and remote areas in, in China, the, the, the Qingba Mountains in, uh, in uh, Shanxi and Sichuan, uh, Liupan Mountain areas uh, in Qinghai, Ningxia, um, um, Hubei, Jiangxi, and uh, all remote villages that I've uh, observed over the past years, uh, I could notice improvements, uh, visible improvements. So even without knowing the exact number of, uh, you know, the income of the um, rural households that we supported, I could definitely see an improvement in their livelihood. So the qualitative assessment uh, is supportive of the um, assessments uh, that are given by, by numbers and, and data. Mm -hmm. um, anything that uh, China's experience could be beneficial, be useful to countries, to people who are also fighting extreme poverty in other parts of the world, Professor Xie, because uh, according to the World Bank, uh, at any given moment we have right now 726 million people living in extreme poverty in, among the whole Earth's population. What do you think would be helpful for people who are watching this to take away with them to help fight extreme pov poverty near them? Well, I think uh, there are two things to take away. One is the design of the program. The uh, targeted poverty alleviation program starting in 2013 in China, um, it's, a, it's a very comprehensive program. It has uh, six major sub-programs, including uh, um, financial infrastructure investment, agricultural promotion, housing relocation, education, and whole village promotion programs. These programs cover uh, impoverished households and persons in all ages, starting from who are not born yet mm. to the elderly. Mm. So it's a life cycle supporting program. Okay, what's the second program. point, please? Yeah. The second thing is the, the, the um, institutional arrangement to implement the program. So this program is, uh, uh, has a command post to implement it. Uh, that is, for example, a county. The leaders of the county is uh, uh, the uh, number one responsible uh, has the number one responsibility for the implementation of the program, and uh, it has layers of governments, and each government uh, accepts the monitoring from the I upper see. government, yeah. and at the and the um, bottom level is the village leaders, okay. and also the officials in various governments are matched okay. ways uh, in yeah. impoverished households We're and running out of regular time. home visits. We're running out of time, but I think in simple words, combining what Matteo has said and what Professor Shea has said, leadership, determination, and accountability, accountability a very strong targeted uh, implementation of all the policies seem to be what China can share with the rest of, wo of the world in terms of fighting extreme poverty. Time is up. Many thanks to Matteo Marquisil and Xie Lun Yu. We'll take a short break, and when we return, does a change in U.S. presidents offer the chance for bilateral reset? And what does competitive cooperation mean anyway?